Thank you, uh, Whitney and Mark, for showing up today. Sure. Sure. Thanks awesome. for having Pleasure. us. So, uh, what are you two uh, working on right now? Anything special or? Right now, we sit around and write in our living room a lot, <laughs> and we go over uh, old songs and kind of whatever strikes our fancy for the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have shows coming up, so we practice for those. We play through our set, and. Uh, we actually have been, been working a lot on uh, polishing and refining the acoustic set, mm -hmm. turning it into something a little bit more than just uh, a couple of guitars and uh, what we sing. Uh, trying to actually throw some things in there that, that spice it up a little bit, make yeah. it more interesting than, than just your average two guitar type. Of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's changed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when did you uh, first start like playing guitar or singing? Bert, well, I was singing in a children's choir for at CCM when I was eight for a long time. So I have lots of uh, lots of classical music and all that. So I've been singing <laughs> for a long time, and started writing songs when I was little too. But started on the the Cincinnati scene in two thousand one. Okay. I was uh, solo, and then uh, met Chris and was playing with Chris for a while, and then uh, re met Mark, who we'd been in a band together. A little while back and that band had broken up and uh, so then the three of us started playing and and then so 2001 okay. really in Cincinnati and playing out and stuff cool yeah. um, who do you I guess consider some of your influences <laughs> we were just talking about oh that. really <laughs> I never know what to say I know that's a kind of a hard question classical music honestly from yeah. my childhood which like Harmony stuff. My love of harmony and singing harmonies is from choir, okay. and then from Indigo Girls. Mm -hmm. I used to sing with Emily Strand yeah. a lot. Uh, we would sing Indigo Girls songs all the time. So them, Journey, just Journey Greatest Hits album. I have all these <laughs> albums, like Greatest Hits albums, that I wore out. That they were they were uh, not not the band as a whole, but like rather just one album. And I'd yeah. listen to the same songs over and over again. Who else? Who are my influences? He seems to have ideas about who my influences are <laughs> better than I do. I like the Sundays, the ethereal sound of the Sundays. Hmm. I think you tend to take a little bit of uh, influence from, from James Taylor. Yeah, you said James Taylor. James Taylor's a big one. Just like really? more your songwriting structure than, than anything else. Yeah. I'm very, cool. I'm, I don't know, you know this, I don't know lots of bands and stuff, and I just smile and nod when people <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I'm a weirdo. One of the one of the things that, that Whitney told me a long time ago that I, I I thought brought a lot of insight into the way she approaches music is, she says that she doesn't listen to a lot of other people's music because it drowns out the music in her head. And that kind of stuck <laughs> with me. <laughs> that sounds so dramatic, but I guess I am a little dramatic. You're dramatic. <laughs> You're a little dramatic. <laughs> it wouldn't be anything but. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um. So when do you, when is your next show? We're playing at 80s Pop Rocks on October oh. 4th. I'm very excited about that. We're bringing in some special guests. Ooh. So I'm excited. And uh, then we're playing One More Girl on a Stage okay. on November 7th. That's at Southgate House. That's hosted by Kristen Kreft. Do you know her? Yeah, she uh, with uh, Jay Dorsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So she's very cool. Just met her a while back. And then we're playing at Katie Ryder Benefit uh, the next night at Dirty Jack's on okay, the 8th of right. November. That's our, that's our stuff coming up. That's your stuff coming up. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, I'd like to, for you guys to uh, play some songs now. No. No. I'm not going to do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's being dramatic. We our guitars. I'm being dramatic. Like, we didn't bring our guitars with us. We didn't bring them. Sing a cappella. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll play some songs. Um, Excellent. We did this one at our wedding, which was so fun to, oh, wow. uh, to play at your own wedding. That, that doesn't fun. happen very often. I know. So it's called Our Own Story, and it's basically just kind of, it's just about day-to-day -day life. It's my song about every day, an everyday kind of song. Ready? We are making our own story as we go, as we go, as we go. Hoping we are hoping that we'll go So happy ever after Happy ever after 
Very nice. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to add that to the song. What we perfect timing that. is that? Like press the keyboard sample. <laughs> Little <laughs> bird squawking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's funny. Very, very nice. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. Gosh, I love playing songs. Songs are good. I love playing songs. So uh, where can uh, people go to find out where you're playing. MySpace. Um, yeah, I have refurbished our MySpace page. So it's just Excellent. Whitney B at MySpace and we're putting all kinds of stuff up there and yeah, so MySpace. Excellent. For now, yeah. All of our show schedules are up there. We've got the, mm -hmm. actually some, some video is, uh, has been yeah. pushed up there now. Oh yeah, tell me about your little, all your, I've noticed the last couple of videos you've been doing. Yeah, we're doing a, every Thursday night in our foyer. Because we don't have to go anywhere. Um, we're uh, 
<laughs> we just sit, we sit the camera down, and then we just play around, and and then we're posting it on YouTube, like our own little TV channel. The, the interwebs <laughs> for the wave of the future. Exactly. We, we decided on the, on the foyer because uh, we, we tried the dining room, we tried yeah. the, the kitchen, it, it just... The sound wasn't quite right, and the feel it and the sound. It has some good acoustics. The ambiance of the, of the foyer, and yes, the, the acoustics are very good in the foyer. It just sounds really good. Yeah. It seemed like a, a nice, cozy, tight little place for us to yeah. set up, and we just we try to keep it as simple as we possibly could. Just a mm -hmm. couple of acoustic guitars and, and us, and just a, a single camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, if people want to see what we're up to. We're, we're posting new stuff every week. Yeah, and we're gonna keep doing it. So it's gonna we're gonna reach back. To old, old stuff. <laughs> old, here. old stuff. Yeah, who knows what we'll be doing. <laughs> well, I told her if we're going to keep doing this week after week, we're going to go through the new stuff. You got to, <laughs> you got to quickly. learn some new yeah. ones and yeah, yeah, yeah. keep writing them so we'll never run out. That's one good thing. <laughs> There's more. Nice, We're nice. Not wrong. Very cool. So, uh, can we hear another song? Another? Yes. This is uh, "What Do You Want." Which is actually about fighting. <laughs> That's all. It's about fighting. Is a couple it? fighting. Yes. I didn't know this. I wrote, <laughs> we were together too when I wrote it. So. You guys never fight. Though, That's right? all I'll say about that. No, but we're good fighters. <laughs> we do fight, but we fight well we and not dirty. We fight fair. <laughs> Except when I'm really angry. <laughs> so yeah, listen to the lyrics. <laughs> Loosely based on reality, though. Loosely. <laughs> <laughs> A little nap yesterday Thought you'd gone out to play But then you always had a knack For getting mad and then coming Remember the first concert you ever went to? Yes, I went to see the Indigo Girls at Bogarts with Emily Very nice. when I was 15. 15. 
15, like 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when I moved downtown later in life, like every time I would go by Short Vine, I'd be like, wow, I, this was like such the big city when I, when I first <laughs> went there. I remember going down there and being like, oh my gosh, we're, we're in Cincinnati. And now it's like, so. Very nice. What about you? It was my sophomore year in high school, and uh, I got talked into uh, going up to Hair Arena and dating by a bunch of my high school friends to see the Beastie Boys who were on tour supporting their first album. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, I'd That's never been to a, a concert. concert before, and uh, it was a festival seating concert at a big giant arena, and wow. uh, the first band to come out, Murphy's Law, um, a punk band from, from Brooklyn. Yeah. The, the guy was climbing the, the, the lighting rigs, and I was just like up there, like <laughs> like this open mouth young kid, just like watching this all go down and thinking, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? And from there on, I was addicted. <laughs> It's a pretty amazing show. Murphy's Law and Fishbone, who I, I still love oh, wow. this day, and of course the Beastie Boys have, have gone on to do such great things. I actually have the Beastie still Boys' first album on vinyl. That's yeah. amazing. That's yeah. amazing. I had that same album. Very, very nice. It's a good time. <laughs> so, uh, what is the, uh, I guess, the, the first song that you learned to play on guitar? Actually, um, one I wrote because I was just oh, okay. teaching myself chords and writing songs as I learned the chords. So crazy! I don't know if you remember crazy. Oh yeah. Many concerts. Yeah, but, um, that one. Yeah, kind of yeah. crazy. Um, that was one of the first songs I ever wrote, and I played that one a lot. And it's just those two. <laughs> you just take these two fingers and go like that and that. So it's very easy. Yeah. It's a very easy song. Um, yeah. So crazy. That would be that. Excellent. And then. Honestly, I can't remember right now any covers off the top of my head, but we used to do, we've done some cover gigs, so I know yeah. a bunch. Oh, yeah. Cool. What about you, form. Mark? Oh, uh, I, I grew up in a family that had never heard of the idea of writing your own music, so <laughs> I, I think that uh, when I was around nine or ten years old, my, my brother, of course, taught me. But then I rapidly progressed to... That was when I really knew I was going to have to play guitar for the rest of my life. Because as soon as I could play some Boston, I mean, it was over. It was over. It was that, over. Was, that was what I had to do. But I started actually writing songs on the guitar when I was about 16, and I'm locked in my bedroom with no possessions except my, my tough love, baby. My, my hoodwinked <laughs> guitar. No, really, I, like I had, I had nothing in my bedroom except uh, my school books, a couple of piles of clothes, and. Uh, and I had somehow managed to, to sneak my guitar into my bedroom because I was having such a tough time in school. My parents decided that that was the best thing for me. <laughs> so I guess in, in retrospect, it kind of was the best thing because look at me now. Here I am playing guitar Still with this playing guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember too, uh, Blood and Fire, Indigo Girls. Oh, there okay. You there you go. That was the first cover that I learned. Where is the, uh, where's the first place that you that you like actually played out in Cincinnati. Do you remember, remember that? Cody's. Cody's yeah. in uh, Clifton. Cody's in Clifton, That's which right. is no more. Yeah. And then Barrel House was huge for me with the Acoustic oh. Artist series and Sean and Henry. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Barrel House. After uh, Cody's was back in the day, right when I was meeting Mark, when mm. we were in the original band together, and then that band broke up, and then I did solo stuff at Barrel House, and we re-met again at Barrel House. I love the Barrel House. I know, I miss it. I cried like a baby when it closed. Yeah. I have the pictures to prove it. I remember being there at the last show. Or not even the so last show. Just, just the, that night they just had that night, yeah. Home. It was yeah. so sad. End of an era for sure. I think they're still making a beer around town though. Mm -hmm. sure. They are. They are. So. Cool. So there's that. Would you like to play one more song? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, cool. This is called Ivory Towers. And... It's about, we did the, the RPM challenge, it was, it's a writing thing where you write and record a CD in February, oh. and we, so we did a concept album just to get the juices flowing, so oh. our, our concept was the rise and fall of an imaginary empire, so yeah, it's, nice. lo <laughs> it's loosely, again, here we go with the, with the loosely based upon reality, loosely based upon a uh, our government today and just what's going on and you know all, all of the government political drama happening and
people getting upset and you know it started not off being as happy. it actually it actually started off as uh, um, an article that I had read in the City Beat magazine, which was about the, the population of Cincinnati dwindling, and that kind of gave me the idea that uh, a lot of people were sort of really really happy about the, the way things were going, and then they were suddenly disillusioned and started mm -hmm. fleeing. So that we, we kind of took that idea, idea and went from there. Mm -hmm. This song is called Ivory Towers, which is about... Yeah. Well, the CD goes from when everybody's happy, and it ends when there's finally hope again. But there's the, uh, this is the song when people are realizing that things are bad mm -hmm. and starting to feel like they might need to do something.
Um, <clears throat> well, very good. Uh, so, uh, once again, when's your next show? October 4th. October 4th. 80s Pop Rocks, November 8th. 7th, Girl on a Stage. One more Girl on a Stage. Excellent. Yeah, both at Southgate House. Cool. Well, you can uh, catch Whitney at uh, myspace.com slash Whitney B. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.